information you want when you need it. This is your Talk of the Town News Update. Good morning. It's five past the hour. I'm Trent McGee with your Talk of the Town News Update. State health officials are viewing the latest coronavirus data showing a downward trend in new cases as a positive sign. Figures released Monday reported only 845 new cases, the second lowest single day total during the month of September. The department also reported the state's positivity rate is now lower than the targeted goal of 5%. East Carolina University saw their weekly COVID numbers drop. There were 26 positive cases among students and seven among staff between September 6th through the 12th. That is down 225 or from 225 students and nine staff between August 30th and September 5th. John Paul II Catholic School in Greenville will now be able to rent out its athletics facilities to third parties on a limited basis after approval by the Greenville City Council. The unanimous vote to approve a revision will limit third party use of lights and amplified sound at the complex to once a month. School use of light and sound is restricted to 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. After just over a year of service, the executive director of Pitt County's Industrial Development Commission has resigned his post. Scott Darnell submitted his resignation letter back on August 26th. It was accepted by the board on August 27th. Kelly Andrews has been named the interim director. The search continues for a Raleigh man who was last seen Saturday after he went to Cameron Village to negotiate the sale of his car with someone he reportedly met on Craigslist. According to his friends, 39-year-old William Anderson Banks was last seen in the parking lot in front of the old K&W cafeteria. On Monday, police investigators found or announced that Banks' 2011 Range Rover had been found in Danville, Virginia. Anyone with information about his whereabouts is asked to contact the Raleigh Police Department. And President Donald Trump will be making his fourth campaign visit to North Carolina in as long as a month when he visits Fayetteville on Saturday. Trump is set to host a great American comeback event at the Fayetteville Regional Airport on September 19th. The campaign visit is listed as a general admission event. Doors are expected to open at 3 o'clock. With your Talk of the Town news update, I'm Trent McGee. Very fall like to start your Tuesday with temps right now around 63 degrees going to a high today of 78 under plenty of sunshine. No rain in sight for today. Overnight lows tonight will be very comfortable around 61 degrees for the low tonight. For your Wednesday again mostly sunny skies. No rain in sight with highs around 78. Overnight lows tomorrow night will be in the upper 60s. And a chance of rain comes our way on Thursday, a 60% chance of showers and maybe a few scattered storms in the area on Thursday with highs in the upper 80s. But again, right now, a great start to your Tuesday, 63 degrees in Greenville, 64 right now in New Bern. Talk of the Town Tuesday rolls on after this on 103.7 WTIB and Talk 96.3. Greenville Toyota wants you to get out and drive. We'll get you out of your old car so you can drive a Corolla 149 RAV4 219. Plus, get out of maintenance fees and drive with the Greenville Advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bellsport, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. With Mark, Mark, and Laura, Beth McCall, and Dylan McKay. The most music for your day plays here. 
My name is Dr. Neeti Armistead, Chief Medical Officer for Vidant Health. The following simple steps will help keep you and your community safe. Stay home as much as possible, wear a mask when out in public, avoid large gatherings, practice social distancing, and wash hands often. It's also important not to delay needed care. Vidant has taken important steps to provide you and your family with a safe environment. Learn more about COVID-19 and Vidant's response. Call 252-847-8000 or visit vidanthealth.com slash COVID-19. All right, football watchers, let's do this. It's time for the opening click off. Click on, click off. Click on, click off. Come on, Sarah, just a little bit more thumb. Now it's time for leg extenders. One, two, three, relax. And now for the second half sip off. Lift, pull, open, drink. What if you have to go shopping on game day? Shopping on game day? Get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. We'll get you out of your trade with up to thousands more than it's worth. We need trades now more than ever, and we'll pay you more for your trade than you ever thought possible. It's time to get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. Is that time? Good morning. Broadcasting on 200,000 watts of top power. The radio is like your kingdom. You're waking up with the face of radio. Henry Hitton. That was what we call in radio lingo, audio gold. This is Talk of the Town with Henry Hitton on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Is that, is that Michael Buble? We got a Michael Buble open now. Welcome. <laughs> Wow. Welcome to the program. It's Tuesday morning, the uh, 15th of September. Welcome, everybody. Hinton, McGee, if you see me in the uh, control room this morning, 62 degrees, man. I'm telling you, it feels like fall out there. It is going to be, uh, we're not going to get to 80 today. We're looking for a high temperature of 78 and uh, no chance of rain. Just an absolute gorgeous day, although we don't hit fall officially until September 23rd, which is now one week from today. Feels like fall this morning, McGee. How are you? 63 degrees, man. It sure <laughs> does. Feels great. Felt great last night when I walked outside to take the trash out. It was cool. It was a breeze. I was like, this is nice. I can get used to this. Yeah. Same temperatures tomorrow, 78 tomorrow, and no chance of rain. Now, the uh, remnants of the hurricane or a tropical storm or whatever it is, Sally. Well, how about those people on the Gulf Coast? They're getting it again, huh? Yeah. Not good. So it's going to make that right turn again when it gets up the uh, inland and uh, supposed to come at us uh, by Thursday. Uh, 60% chance of rain on Thursday, thunderstorms and showers. I, you know, what we're hearing is that it's going to be later in the day on Thursday, maybe even Thursday night. That's what we're hoping so that we can uh, do our event in Edenton on Thursday morning. We're going to do the show on the waterfront in Edenton on Thursday morning. And uh, we will have tents. Uh, the good folks um, uh, up there at uh, Party and Equipment Rentals are going to put up tents for us. And so don't hesitate to come out. But I don't think it's going to rain until later in the day. And so um, I, I think we're going to be fine. We'll be right on the waterfront, on that beautiful waterfront in Edenton, right next to the Penelope Barker uh, Edenton Visitor Center. And... Um, I was talking yesterday with uh, the staff of the lieutenant governor, and Dan Forrest will be there with us, and uh, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to have some fun with uh, Dan coming up on uh, on on Thursday morning in Edenton. Um, <clears throat> a lot to get to this morning. ECU has now announced the game time for the uh, first football game a week from Saturday. McGee, I'm not surprised, but it, it's going to be noon, right? <laughs> Nooner. I don't really mind it being noon since we can't go. I'm still frustrated we can't go. I just don't understand why we can't go. But. I don't care about it being a noon game, <coughs> but I, you know, <coughs> I thought maybe there could be another outlet than ESPN Plus. Is that where it's going to be? Yes. So you have to be a subscriber to ESPN Plus, which, again, not so much. So you need, you need to go ahead and do that if you hadn't done it yet, yeah, right? Yeah, it's four ninety nine, $5.99 a month. It's not much at all, but you have to go ahead and get that to be able to watch the game. Well, you know what? It makes sense for ESPN. They're going to hose us if they can. And, you know, putting that game on ESPN Plus means that uh, a, yeah, a big UCF payday. UCF is ranked 14th in the country it, it right now. It's a big payday for ESPN to put it on ESPN. But to put that on free just, TV. Yeah, I just thought, especially if UCF gets by Georgia Tech this weekend, which they're favored to do so, I thought maybe they would give give this game 
a little more of a top billing, but I guess not. You know, I like the fact that we're playing number 14 in the country. Remember last oh, I year? I like it. Hey, we had Cincinnati. Cincinnati was ranked like 10 last year when they came to Dowdy Ficklin, and we had them beat. Remember that late interception? Yeah. We had them beat. So, you know, don't count the Pirates out. I mean, you know, you, you know we're Pirates. Well, no, I'm not ca counting them out. I'm just saying, being that UCF is ranked in the top 25, I thought maybe it would get well, up. I was, I was just speaking rhetorically. Oh, I wasn't okay. speaking to you. I'm just saying you can't ever count us out. No, not at all. <coughs> and this year I think they're going to be better, so we'll see. That, um, I heard the defense played a lot better in the scrimmage this week, so mm -hmm. I'm excited. <coughs> all right, we got a big issue this morning. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I watched the debate last night with Tillis and Cunning. I was back and forth, uh, several phone calls last night. I got to watch a little bit of it. It looked like amateur hour for uh, Cal Cunningham. He, he doesn't look like he's ready for prime time to me. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But here's the big news story that broke yesterday. Nearly 50, I think the number now is uh, 47 Democrats that are either in the legislature or candidates to go in the legislature have apparently uh, signed a pledge with an organization called Future Now. And this organization is on record. And, and, and again, the, you know, the Democrats are yelling foul on this. So we'll, I'm going to get into it and delve into it as best I can. But they are, uh, uh, the future now pledged to achieve America's goals uh, includes things like affordable health care, boosting education spending, ensuring equal opportunities for all. But, and some of the Democrats signed this pledge back in 2018. And here's why, why do they sign it? Because this organization is handing out money to Democrats like candy. So we'll get into who got the money and, you know, stand by because it's going to be a shocker to some of you. But here's the big news. So sometime this year, this uh, Future Now organization has added to their list of demands and uh, things that they want their candidates that they're giving money to, to uh, on this pledge one of the things they've added is now to defund the police. So who has signed this? 47 Democrats, including, are you ready for this? Pitt County Democrat candidate Brian Farkas has signed this thing. Now, it's unclear when they added this defund the police thing, whether Farkas signed it before or after that, but to me it doesn't make any difference, because if you sleep with the, if you sleep with the enemy, <laughs> if you sleep with an organization that's even got a propensity to to have a platform like defunding the police, then you deserve what you're getting ready to get, which is you know a whole lot of grief from people who might have voted for you who are no longer going to vote for you. So independent voters, I want you to listen to me very carefully here. You've got two Pitt County Democrats who have signed this thing. Brian Farkas, who's running against uh, Representative Perrin Jones, has signed this pledge with this organization that now has as its part of its platform to defund the police. Candy Smith has also signed it. So if I'm uh, Tony Moore and, um, and Perrin Jones, I'm going to make sure that all the voters know that my opponents have signed on with an organization who has as one of its missions to defund the police. And why? Because they got a $5,400 donation from this PAC, Future Now. Does this blow anybody away like it does me? And, of course, you know, the Democrats are trying to do their best right now to uh, handle the damage here that's been done. The, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, had a press conference last night, obviously highlighting that all these Democrats have signed this uh, pledge and are backing this organization that wants to defund the police. Um, House Minority Leader Darren Jackson has now come out and says, this is a lie. How is it a lie? I can show you their names in black and white, McGee. 
Here is the um, here's the list of names of these representatives from across the country who have signed this. On it, Brian Farkas from Pitt County, North Carolina. On it, Candy Smith, representative from Pitt County, North Carolina. Farkas is a candidate. Candy Smith is a sitting representative of Pitt County. <clears throat> Defund the police. That's where we are now with the Democrats. I I've been warning you for many, many, many years here on this program, if you're a Democrat, because we all were, right? Uh, th there just became a tipping point for all of us that grew up here in eastern North Carolina, that grew up Democrats. There was a tipping point for all of us. For me, it came in the 80s. For you, it might not have happened until now. But if you are now still in the Democrat camp and you see that the platform of the Democrat Party is now to uh, defund the police and you're still on board with the Democrats, what is wrong with you? <clears throat> now, they're going to come back and try to spin this the best way that they can. Farkas is probably going to put out something today and spin it. Candy probably won't. She probably actually is on board with defunding the police and saying, yeah, I got a problem with it. But, uh, you know, I just it just blows me away that you've got Democrats who signed on to this Future Now organization that now is actually part of their part of their uh, uh, pledge here is against law enforcement officers in this country. Defund the police. You know, here's what I would say to Brian Farkas: You going to give the money back, Candy? You going to give the money back? Or are you going to hold on to it? Well, I'll tell you what: If I was you, I'd give that money back so fast. But maybe you believe it. Maybe, you, maybe you're all bored with this organization. So I've asked the Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, to come on this morning. I hadn't heard back from him yet. I'm hoping to get him. We'll have Representative, we'll have Congressman Greg Murphy on the phone here in a few minutes. Uh, we were going to talk to Murphy about the latest on COVID, but I'm sure that um, the Congressman's going to want to weigh in on this as well. There's just, you know, it, it, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. When I read this last night, I couldn't believe that Brian Farkas had signed on to this organization mm -hmm. that's got as part of their mission now to defund the police. But he did it because he got a $5,400 uh, donation. And, you know, it, it's unclear. It, the, the, it's unclear exactly. I'm, I'm reading from, uh, let's see, let me read from the. Do you think that the group, when they offered this contribution, made it clear that this is what their motive was? I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't speak for them. I don't know. I just know that it's there now. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find the part of it. Okay. Fu uh, Future Now is pledged to achieve America's goals. Uh, while the pledge does not explicitly calling for defunding the police, such a proposal can be found under the subsection for equal opportunities for all on the America's Goals website, including included is model legislation to create a commission to study taking money from police departments and giving to other community programs like youth shelters. That's defunding the police. Right now, law enforcement officers across our nation are being targeted and attacked, said Speaker Tim Moore. I consider signing this pledge, I consider signing this pledge a direct attack on, law, on North Carolina law enforcement officers. So do I. Representative Marsha Morey, a Democrat in Durham, told Carolina Journal that when she signed the Future Now Pledge in 18, defunding the police was not part of the stated goal. She told them that the police proposals must have been added this year, and she doesn't support defunding law enforcement. Now, Carolina Journal sent an email to Jackson asking him, this is Darren Jackson, the head of the Democrats in the House, if he would pledge his support today now that a proposal to defund the police is listed on the American's Goals website, and here was Jackson's answer. Crickets. He didn't respond. You know why? <clears throat> because this group gave $50,000 to the Democrat caucus in North Carolina for the House, trying to beat Republicans. Jackson did send out a news release saying, Speaker Moore has given, up, given us another, a, another set of blatant lies. Here comes the spin. 
you know, don't believe your lying eyes. I mean, I'm looking at the na- the list of names here, and I'm looking at the goals of this organization that says defund the police. But here's the head of the Democrats in the uh, in, in the Republican Party. I mean, in the uh, House, the uh, House Democrat leader Jar- Darren da- Jackson says, "Don't believe your lying eyes, <clears throat> because these are lies by Speaker Moore." No, we didn't pledge to defund the police, but we did pledge to invest in quality health care and education. I got news for you, Jackson. That's a lie. (laughs) If House Democrats don't agree with the proposal to defund the police, then they should come out and disavow this organization, Moore said. They can also give the money back. While some House Democrats signed the pledge in 18, Democrats running in 2020 likely signed it this year. Brian Farkas included. Future Now has given money to challengers like Nicole Quick, Kimberly Hardy, Amy Steele, Francis Vanell Jackson, Ricky Hurtado, Hurtado, and Brian Farkas. <clears throat> Don't believe your lying eyes because they've been caught. They're taking money from these radical groups. These radical left-wing groups, you know, they're, you know, gimme, 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 gimme some money, gimme some money. Now they got the money, and now this group comes out and says, hey, by the way, that $100,000 that we put into the North Carolina legislature, we want you guys to defund the police. And now what are the, what are the Democrats saying? I don't, uh, I, I don't, I know nothing about this. I, I, I have no idea what they're talking about. So here's what I say. Either give the money back, disavow this group that is saying uh, defund the police that gave you the money, or own it. Go ahead and own it. My guess is that Candy Smith's going to own this. This is unbelievable to me. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to Representative Greg Murphy about this coming up in a few minutes. Here's another uh, interesting little scenario that's come out. So uh, the the Senate leader here in North Carolina, Phil Berger, came out yesterday and said the North Carolina Association of Educators has also kind of jumped the shark here. And that they, by uh, by supporting part of their pledges and their, the way that they're going with the NCAE, and how, how long would, what did I tell you when we heard that the, the Los Angeles police uh, uh, teachers union had come out with a defund the police part of their platform. Yeah. That happened in California. I said, you wait for it. North Carolina Association of Educators won't be far behind. Article in the News and Observer, North Carolina Senate GOP accuses teachers group of backing cop killers. Senate Republicans accused the North Carolina Association of Educators on Monday of supporting cop killers, prompting the group to say Senate leader Phil Berger was spouting garbage. Well, let's find out what this is all about. Tamika Kelly, the president of NCAE, encouraged educators to sign a change.org petition pledging to participate in the Black Lives Matter at Schools Year of Purpose program. The program has activities throughout the school year that organizers say are meant to uplift black students. So again, Your kids going to public schools in the state of North Carolina? They're going to have Black Lives Matter all year long. It's the year of purpose for Black Lives Matter. Now, again, you know, before somebody wants to start calling me a racist, I believe that Black Lives Matter. I believe that everyone's life matters in this country. But I also believe that the organization Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization. And I believe it's responsible for some of the bad stuff we're seeing happen against our police officers right now. On Monday, Phil Berger cited Kelly's tweet to say North Carolina Association of Educators openly embraces cop-killing terrorist Asada Shakur, who was convicted in the 1973 killing of a New Jersey state trooper. A quote from Shakur's autobiography, It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. That is part of the Black Lives Matter school homepage that the North Carolina Association of Educators now wants your students, your children, 
to be subjected to all year long with their year of purpose. This stuff's going too far, folks. It's going too far. We've got to stop it in its tracks before it goes any further. You know, what has happened to the Democrat Party? <clears throat> this is not the party of John F. Kennedy. This is the partner of William Barber. I've said it before. If you don't believe it, guess who's teaming up with William Bully Barber here in the state of North Carolina? None other than Mr. Joe Biden. Biden is going to be one of the speakers at an online event Monday night next week led by, wait for it, William Barber. Democrats are embracing this stuff. It's not racist to not want this stuff infiltrating our public schools. It's not racist. We want to teach our children that all lives do matter, that black lives do matter. But don't give me this Marxist organization that the North Carolina Association of Educators wants to shove down the throats of our children all year long in public schools. It's just out of hand at this point. And I'd love to hear what Brian Far where Brian Farkas is on this. I'd love to hear it, but of course he won't do a forum with us. He refused to do a forum with us in the spring. We know he won't do one this fall. He's doing one with the chamber. When is it, tomorrow? Today. Today. At 11 o'clock. I'll be tuned in. <clears throat> as, that, of right, as, of, as of right now, it's still. <laughs> yeah, he, he may decide he's not going to do it after this. Um, but, yes, 11 o'clock today. You can still sign up today. So he'll have to make a public statement on this today. And this is going to be on the Chamber of Commerce website? It, it's going to be a vir in a virtual format in a Zoom call. How do you get it? Go to greenvillemc.org. You can sign up right now. you got to sign up in advance? Mm -hmm. Greenville, and it's open to the public? Open to the public. GreenvilleNC.org. I'd love to hear what Mr. Farkas has to say about this organization that gave him money that he's now part of that wants to defund the police. And is he going to give the money back? Love to see it. Or is he going to be like Darren Jackson and, and have no comment on it? Keep in mind now, the, 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 this organization has not just given a, a little money here and there. They've targeted specific races like they're targeting Perrin Jones and um, they're giving Brian Farkas money to try to beat Perrin Jones but they've given other candidates money and they've given the Democrat caucus $50,000. They've put $100,000 into North Carolina Democrats trying to take out Republicans with this defund the police mentality. Going to give the money back, Brian? 7.33, 27 in front of 8 o'clock. Let's do the Pirate Report, shall we? Did they practice yesterday? They have the day off. Have the day off. All right, our Pirate Report this morning is brought to you by Good in the Neighborhood. Who do you know who has done something that deserves to be recognized during this COVID challenge? Our friends at GoodInTheNeighborhoodNC.com want to give them $500. So nominate your friend that's done something, 500 bucks. Every month from now till the end of the year, GoodInTheNeighborhoodNC.com is going to give a $500 gift to someone that they pick who you nominate. Very simple. You just go to GoodInTheNeighborhoodNC.com and put their name in and tell us why they deserve the $500. And uh, simple. we'll give them the $500 at the end of the month. Let's go to Trent McGee now with our Pirate Report brought to you by GoodInTheNeighborhoodNC.com. East Carolina's September 26th contest against 14th-ranked Central Florida will kick off at 12 noon and available to stream only on the subscriber-based ESPN Plus service. We learned that on Monday the Pirates were 1-3 in, in noon games a season ago. ECU returns to practice today, continuing preparations for the Knights. On Monday, ECU offensive coordinator Donnie Kirkpatrick joined the Patrick Johnson Show and shared his thoughts on the competitive nature 
of this year's team. They are learning to compete. I don't know if I could have said that this time last year. In fact, I know I couldn't have really said that if I'd be honest. But they've learned to compete when they feel good and, and sometimes maybe when they don't feel great. They're learning to go out there and compete every time. So that's good news there from uh, offensive coordinator uh, Donnie Kay. In the NFL Monday night, Ben Roethlisberger threw three touchdown passes as the Steelers opened the season with a 26-16 win over the Giants. Steven Guskowski's 25-yard field goal with 17 seconds left lifted the Titans to a 16-14 win of the Broncos in Denver. And this afternoon on the Patrick Johnson Show, he'll welcome former ECU head basketball coach Mac McCarthy to discuss his new book, 5-6, to six, on 94.3 The Game. Yeah, I'm trying to get Mac to do a book signing. We got uh, Mac McCarthy. Should be a fun read. Uh, you know Should what? Be a fun Mac, read. Mac McCarthy's been in the, uh, the, 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 the big-time basketball arena for many, many years. 40, 40 years. Yeah, and he's a great guy and yeah. a funny guy, so he it's is. probably a good book. 7.35, uh, Dr. Greg Murphy, our congressman, next. We're going to ask uh, Congressman Murphy the latest on uh, COVID and where we stand. also want to get his input and his reaction to this uh, defund the police pledge now with uh, some of the Democrats here in North Carolina. We'll be right back with Greg Murphy. Get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. We'll get you out of your trade with up to thousands more than it's worth. We need trades now more than ever, and we'll pay you more for your trade than you ever thought possible. It's time to get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. Top Dog Academy provides training services and daycare for dog owners in and around Greenville. The Top Dog facility located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, is a comfortable, healthy environment where dog owners can feel secure about leaving their pets. Top Dog Academy teaches people how to have a better relationship with their dog. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. My name is Dr. Neeti Armistead, Chief Medical Officer for Vident Health. The following simple steps will help keep you and your community safe. Stay home as much as possible, wear a mask when out in public, avoid large gatherings, practice social distancing, and wash hands often. It's also important not to delay needed care. Vident has taken important steps to provide you and your family with a safe environment. Learn more about COVID-19 and Vident's response. Call 252-847-8000 or visit videnthealth.com slash COVID-19. Self-pity. My life was in shambles. At first, I never drank on the job, but eventually I did. Removing alcohol wasn't enough. It left me depressed. That's where AA offered a solution. I remember sitting in the AA meeting and thinking, I finally found a place where I belong. AA not only keeps me sober, it helps me live a much better life. If you have a problem with alcohol, contact AA. It works for me. And for me. And for me. This is a radiated tortoise. Because of the support from AZA, I'm able to put these endangered tortoises back into the wild. When I was younger, watching scuba divers conserve these magnificent creatures, I wanted to be a part of that. I work in Hawaii with critically endangered forest birds. Birds are so interesting to me because they're living dinosaurs. I love working with them. I know I always want to work with kids, and I fell in love with the animals and conservation side. It's exactly where I'm supposed to be. Won't you join us? Greenville Toyota wants you to get out and drive. We'll get you out of your old car so you can drive a Corolla 149, RAV4s 219. Plus, get out of maintenance fees and drive with the Greenville Advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Your week. Police officers, I'm praying for you. Your news every day as events happen. Convalescent plasma for patients. Will happen to be there. We can't have Joe Biden rule the country and have no police. Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. Back to the show that really makes you think. Come on, man. Talk 96.3 and 103.7. This is Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. 739, Congressman Greg Murphy is in Washington, D.C. this morning doing the people's work. He's on the telephone with us right now, and uh, we're going to get an update from him on several things. Good morning, uh, Congressman. How are you? I'm well, Henry. I hope you're doing well. 
Yes, sir. Let me start with this news that's just uh, shaken me to my core this morning, that 47 Democrats, including two from Pitt County, Brian Farkas, who's running for your old seat, running against uh, uh, Perrin Jones, Candy Smith, are two of the 47 Democrats who have signed on to this organization called Future Now. It's a political action committee that has as part of its um, platform to defund the police. Now, Darren, I'm sure you know Darren Jackson well. Darren's the head of the House uh, Democrats. He's coming out trying to spin this, saying it's a lie. We didn't know anything about defund the police when we signed it. But the new Democrats, including Brian Farkas, who signed it in 2020 and got $5,400 from this organization, it's unclear when the defund the police uh, part of their uh, platform went on their website, but it's there now. So I want to get your reaction to all this. I'm just shaken by it this morning. Well, uh, I think it's, it's uh, Henry, it's just hard to put into words that those are actually words that people are saying in this country. It's just beyond my comprehension. Now, as suppose, you know, one of the candidates has had so many run ins with the law, no wonder she. Uh, she wants to defund the police, but that's a different issue. Um, the younger kid, Farkas, uh, you know, he's just jumping in line. He's going to be a, a career um, politician Democrat, and so, I mean, he better follow the party mantra right now. It's just it's unconscionable to me, and I think both Republicans and Democrats, law-abiding citizens, should be very, very afraid of what these new Democrats are proposing. Yeah, I, I just, um, with what's going on in the country right now, um, and, and, you know, the, 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 but it seems like the Democrats are in a situation where they, they're, 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 they keep moving further and further and further left. And I, I keep saying to, to independent voters and swing voters, I mean, are you watching what's happening with the Democrat Party? I mean, yeah. I, I, so, you know, the, 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 we're, we're losing a generation of people who, you know, loved the Democrat Party because it was the party of John Kennedy and all that. Well, I, well, I'm telling you, this is the party now of William Barber. It's the party of defund the police, and here it is. It, it's the party of Karl Marx is what the party is. Yeah. It's the party of Karl Marx. So, uh, all right, um, well. It's a very tragic occurrence for this country. Trying to get the uh, Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, to uh, phone in next hour. We'll see uh, how that goes. Uh, let's talk about uh, the latest uh, in COVID. You've been, uh, I think, probably the most uh, level-headed, rational representative in government that I've heard in terms of dealing with where we are with coronavirus, and we haven't had you on several weeks. Give us a little update on where you think we are right now. Well, actually, Henry, I put out a video yesterday to talk about where we, uh, an update because uh, I hadn't done that in several weeks, and I also talked about Operation Warp Speed. So basically, if you look at some of the statistics where we are right now, we've had the two spikes um, that a lot of folks predicted. We had the, the spike in the northeast uh, earlier in the year, and then we've had a spike in the south, midwest, and um, southwest later on in the year. And it just goes to show you that this virus is not going away. And for anybody that thinks it is, um, that we're going to wish it away is, is wrong. And so um, fortunately, we've seen a marked decrease in hospitalizations. We've seen a great decrease in the uh, in the fatalities that have occurred. You know, if you look at <clears throat> the the death rate, uh, the peak, I believe, April 16th, um, on that day, and um, I think my statistics are pretty close, 22.6% of the people who died on April 16th died of COVID. That number now is less than 5%. So we've made massive strides, you know, in people who get the disease, in curing them. Um, compared to what we do before. I mean, you know, it was four or five times better than what we did before. And then also, just so people understand my statistics that I put on my congressional video yesterday, that 78% of the deaths in the United States, you know, that's four out of five, occur in people, individuals 65 and older, with either comorbid diseases or the biggest risk factor is morbid obesity. That's the biggest risk factor other than age. And so we've made market strides. But, you know, talk a little bit about Operation Warp Speed. Well, Operation Warp Speed, for those <clears throat> who are history buffs and who remember, is literally the Manhattan Project of the, of the day. Um, May 15th, the Trump administration put forth an effort to get private industry, researchers, and cooperation with the federal government, with technology of, the today, of today, to put out a safe 
an effective vaccine. And I will tell you, no corners are being cut. No corners are being cut. Um, and, you know, I've, done, I've spoken with the head of the FDA and so many other physicians involved in this process. And I believe by the end of December, we will have at least two vaccines that will be extremely effective for, uh, for this virus. Oh, that's great what news. Is, uh, what is, and let me just throw in what's very um, disappointing is that, it, of course, as with everything, um, it's turned political. And, yeah. you know, uh, what's his name? Cal Cunningham yeah. said last night that he would not take the vaccine. What a, I'm sorry. He just, you know, give me a break. Um, I will say, you know, Jonas Salk, if people remember, was the, uh, the creator of the uh, polio vaccine. And what did Jonas Salk do? He proved to people that he believed in that vaccine. He took it himself. He had his family take it. And so your, your uh, congressional member um, will take the vaccine. Actually, I signed up last night to be part of a vaccine trial. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I believe in the process. I believe it is an apolitical process. You know, the Trump administration wants it to be successful. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's going to be done by medical standards, which are apolitical, and I believe it will really be our gateway to move, moving forward. I'm with you. I, I tell you what, maybe you and I, maybe we can get somebody to come in here and give us the vaccine live on television and on radio. and we'll take. Oh, the- Henry, I'll be happy to give you a shot. <laughs> I want your nurse to give it to me, if not you. <laughs> I'm afraid you. T- I'm afraid you twist it. <laughs> but I, you know, I was. I, I was watching that Cunningham uh, Tillis debate last night. I could not believe that you got. You know, but it just kind of sh- it proves that they're just trying to use this coronavirus to win these to win the election. I mean, you got uh, the Democrat candidate for United States senator trying to discredit the vaccine <laughs> and and why would you do that except that you know it's just part of the let's beat trump mentality it's part of the platform right yeah 100 percent. i mean i think to be honest with you let's use the word pathetic pathetic um downright pathetic yeah. and uh you know he, he's because of his actions some people will not take the vaccine and that will cost lives so um, let's just be very factual. Let's be very truthful about it. Because of his stupidity, his partisanship, um, people uh, will die. So, the, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get there. There's only <clears> – <throat> there, there are two ways out of this pandemic. There's two ways out. Number one is either you get the virus and you recover, which is a highly recoverable virus. But we have many, many deaths because of this, uh, regardless, because people carry the virus. So you either get it and you recover. Um, you get it or you don't recover or you get a vaccine. You never have to have the disease and you get the antibodies so um, that if you're exposed to the virus, you don't get sick. So it's, it's very simple. It's very simple. There are basically, you know, two good ways out of it, one bad way out of it. Uh, Congressman Greg Murphy, the third district congressman here in North Carolina, on the telephone with us. I'm, I'm hearing uh, whispers of a new contract with America that you folks in D.C. are working on. Tell me about that. Well, it's really, uh, it's even more than that. It's a commitment to America. It's a commitment on behalf of the Republican Party. We've seen nothing. And this is what's been so frustrating being in Washington, D.C., under Pelosi's uh, leadership in the, in the Congress, is that she's done nothing, nothing in her two years to advance the cause of the uh, United States. All she's done, she and Adam Schiff spent five, six months, just everything was all about impeaching the president. She is obsessed with hatred of Donald Trump and she to the detriment of the people of the United States. And so what we're telling, what we're going to tell the American people today on the Capitol steps is what we're going to do when we get the majority back, what, what commitment we are going to make to the American people about um, restoring health, rebuilding the economy, and moving this nation forward, something that they have been totally incapable of doing. I know that, you know, speaking of defunding the police and supporting the police with all that we've seen going on, uh, things um, happening in Pennsylvania and uh, San Diego and Los Angeles with the two deputies shot, uh, I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to have a Back the Blue rally here in Greenville on October the 10th. Uh, Jerry Fisher uh, has put this together, and I know that uh, Jerry's been asking you to be a part of this, and you're going to speak at this event but I think that uh, now more than ever, uh, we need to show the uh, law enforcement officers of this country that, that, there are, that, that the overwhelming majority 
uh, of people in this country still support them and thank them for what they do. We do. And you know who I am? Um, my heart really goes out to are the dedicated officers, the African-American officers, the Hispanic officers who are getting, you know, spat at by um, the uh, political activists that seek just to divide this nation. And, um, you know, they're, they, they put the badge on every day and they put it on proudly. And they do that to protect and to serve us. Yeah, we've had a couple instances of bad apples, no doubt, no doubt. But this idiotic uh, movement of defunding the police and thinking that these individuals know best how to, uh, how to categorize political justice, that we're going to have social workers that run out and in the midst of a gunfight or something calm somebody down who's high on cocaine or something, um, it's, just, it, it's just pure ignorance and stupidity. Um, but I, my hats go off uh, to all the brave men and women of law enforcement. They care. Um, they put their lives on the line to keep us safe. And it's about time that we in the United States stood up to these, uh, these troublemakers, these rioters, um, and, said, and say enough is enough. Congressman, this is Trent. And I wanted to thank you for the uh, bipartisan letter you sent to uh, Speaker Pelosi and uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy regarding PGV and support for it. I was just curious if you had any updates on it, because I think everyone knows, and certainly you, how important PGV is to uh, the Greenville community and eastern North Carolina. Of course, you're talking about the airport, PGV. Yes, I'm sorry, the Pitt Greenville airport, may not know what PGV yes, is. Yes, thank you for that. Yeah, no, um, I reached out when I found out about this. I reached out to Congressman Butterfield and suggested that we do a letter together um, in support of our airport and our, my staff and his staff work together to craft the letter. Uh, you know, I've also spoken with folks of American Airlines. I get where they're coming from. It's merely a numbers game. I'm hopeful that this will not be a permanent uh, loss or pit um, for uh, airline service. Um, it's going to be tough. I mean, we're, they're, they're, there's such a contraction of airline services that is going to be permanent, or at least for the next 10 years or so. So many business travelers are not going to be traveling anymore. And so um, I think the airline industry is going to be in for some tough times. You know, so many people don't realize how much of the mail gets tra- gets carried by our airline industry, so much of the mm-hmm. commerce that gets, gets done. So we have to support our airlines. Um, and so uh, I, I'm hopeful that what uh, Congressman Butterfield and I did will move the needle. We'll just that, – that will remain to be seen. Uh, we're almost out of time. I do want to mention this, though, because I just got the uh, daily – I get the daily numbers from Vida, uh, Health and Vida Medical Center. And interestingly, uh, we, we keep hearing, you know, that the numbers are going down significantly in the state of North Carolina. But as has been the trend here, uh, Congressman, we are lagging behind in eastern North Carolina. And the numbers in Vidant this morning are up. There are 15 patients in ICU this morning, which is really the most I've seen maybe since the well, early, early days. Yeah, so it's been a, a sawtooth pattern. And this is, again, you know, every – Unfortunately, everybody now is on the Internet, and they, they have a medical degree. It's a sawtooth pattern. <laughs> it's up and down, up and down, up and down. What we look for are trends. That's what tells us the most. And, yeah, we're gonna ha- we're, we've seen some bumps, but, you know, a couple weeks ago it really fell down again. Um, you have to remember that um, Biden is a tertiary uh, referral area, and so other hospitals send their patients to us. We're not out of this. And I said that again and again. This is why we're, I'm really being such a good proponent of the vaccine. We're not out of this, and so we have to continue to be vigilant. But at the same time, and, you know, I'm, I've caught some flack from some of my medical colleagues, um, at the same time, we have to continue living. Uh, you know, we had quarantines during the polio epidemic. We had all those things. People didn't realize this, but folks did not go to movie theaters. You know, they stayed at home. Very similar to what's going on now, but we have to keep living. Um, you know, Joe Biden's idea of shutting the whole country down, what a disaster. What a, what a horrible reactionary comment. Um, and so, well, and, you know, we're and, doing and that. And that, and that came after he didn't want to shut down it, uh, p- people coming to the United States from China. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he ca- of course, he called that. He called the president xenophobic and all yeah, this other nonsense. Right. Um, you know, uh, poor, poor Joe. I'm not sure he knows where he is half the time. And, um, you know. So true. So be it. So, so be all right. It. Uh, Congressman uh, Greg Murphy, uh, travel safely back uh, back to Pitt County. We appreciate all that you're doing, and uh, let us know. Keep us updated on any developments. We appreciate all you're doing for us. Yes, sir. Take care. All right. Thank you, sir. Congressman Greg Murphy, 754.
Six minutes now in front of 8 o'clock. Let's get a quick break in. We're coming back. We'll probably have time for our laugh track. Man, we might need to laugh after this hour and all the bad stuff that's come out of the Democrats in the last 24 hours in North Carolina. I'm just blown away by all this. I'll recap that for you in a minute if you haven't heard the news about the uh, Democrats who signed this uh, pledge with this organization whose uh, platform is to defund the police. Uh, We'll be right back with more Tuesday Talk of the Town. Get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. We'll get you out of your trade with up to thousands more than it's worth. We need trades now more than ever, and we'll pay you more for your trade than you ever thought possible. It's time to get out and drive at Greenville Toyota. Top Dog Academy provides training services and daycare for dog owners in and around Greenville. The Top Dog facility located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, is a comfortable, healthy environment where dog owners can feel secure about leaving their pets. Top Dog Academy teaches people how to have a better relationship with their dog. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. My name is Dr. Neeti Armistead, Chief Medical Officer for Vidant Health. The following simple steps will help keep you and your community safe. Stay home as much as possible, wear a mask when out in public, avoid large gatherings, practice social distancing, and wash hands often. It's also important not to delay needed care. Vidant has taken important steps to provide you and your family with a safe environment. Learn more about COVID-19 and Vidant's response. Call 252-847-8000 or visit vidanthealth.com slash COVID-19. in shambles. At first, I never drank on the job, but eventually I did. Removing alcohol wasn't enough. It left me depressed. That's where AA offered a solution. I remember sitting in the AA meeting and thinking, I finally found a place where I belong. AA not only keeps me sober, it helps me live a much better life. If you have a problem with alcohol, contact AA. It works for me. And for me. And for me. This is a radiated tortoise. Because of the support from Asia, I'm able to put these endangered tortoises back into the wild. When I was younger, watching scuba divers conserve these magnificent creatures, I wanted to be a part of that. I work in Hawaii with critically endangered forest birds. Birds are so interesting to me because they're living dinosaurs. I love working with them. I know I always want to work with kids, and I fell in love with the animals and conservation side. It's exactly where I'm supposed to be. Won't you join us? Greenville Toyota wants you to get out and drive. We'll get you out of your old car so you can drive a Corolla 149, RAV4, 219. Plus, get out of maintenance fees and drive with the Greenville Advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Two minutes in front of eight. Welcome back to uh, Talk of the Town. Beautiful morning here in eastern North Carolina. Uh, temperature now up to 63. We're going to a high today of 78. No chance of rain. Just an absolutely gorgeous day. This is the kind of day we live here for. Uh, I don't think we got time to get the laugh track in. So let me just mention a couple of things here. Again, um, we're efforting to get the uh, Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, to uh, come on next hour to respond to this um, news that broke yesterday. He did a press conference yesterday afternoon, early last night in Raleigh to uh, to point out that 47 Democrats in North Carolina have sound, signed on to a political action committee who's given them all money, by the way, uh, like $100,000 to North Carolina Democrats. And this organization, Future Now, is, um, is, is for defunding the police. So you've got people like Brian Farkas, the Democrat candidate for House of Representatives running against uh, Perrin Jones, who signed on to this group. You've got Candy Smith, who signed on to this group. And, you know, the question is, um, now that this is public and they've kind of been caught, uh, 
associating themselves with uh, this radical left-wing organization that looks like it's probably about as radical left-wing as it gets. Are they going to give the money back? Are they going to stand by this defund the police pledge from this group? So we'll see. Uh, Still waiting a response from them. Uh, Again, Brian Farkas is scheduled to do a, um, a forum online with Perrin Jones today with the Greenville Chamber of Commerce. And McGee says you can sign up for that at Greenville. You have until 10 o'clock to do it this morning. GreenvilleNC.com. All right, let's get our news break in, and we're coming back with more Tuesday morning talk of the town. Stay with us.